Hello, this is Jeremy Greg Greklowski from ForexLive.com. This is the Kickstarter video for the trading week starting April 8th, 2024. What are the technicals saying for the major currency pairs? What can we expect in trading next week? Uh, we'll go through that uh, in this video, so let's get started. When you uh, do the technicals, you want to uh, look at uh, the past and then look toward the future and uh, use the technical tools that are uh, used to define things like bias and risk and targets and such like that. So uh, let's uh, take that uh, the tact uh, in this video uh, for the euro versus US dollar. I'm going to start by taking a look at the daily chart. And what we saw on trading last week uh, was, or in the, in the current week uh, that we just uh, finished, was that I uh, recall from the Friday before, the price had moved below this uh, trend line. This trend line connected different lows right through here, here, and even uh, here. And then uh, we fell below that level, but then closed above that level. So this trend line was going to be a key barometer for either bullish above or bearish below. If we moved higher, we looked toward things like the moving average 50% retracement. If we move lower, we look toward this swing area down here and get below that level, and we open the door for further downside. Well, um, as you can see, the uh, price on Monday moved a little bit higher and then uh, rotated back down below that uh, trend line and rotated back down toward what we thought was uh, our next target area down here between 1.0694 to 1.0738. Everything's um, uh, working like you expect. Uh, and then uh, we uh, we uh, continued that uh, trend on Tuesday, but then uh, closed a little bit higher. Higher Wednesday was the U.S. ISM non-manufacturing day, which I uh, saw weaker than expected ISM, weaker than expected prices pay, and things started to rotate back to the upside with the euro getting stronger, the dollar getting weaker, uh, and that took the price where? Right up to the 200-day moving average. That continued on Thursday where until the price reached uh, near the 100-day moving average and also just above the 50% retracement. The high for the week came in around 76. The 100-day uh, moving average came in at 0. 1.08716 or something there about. So it was about four, five pips above that level when the price then started to rotate back to the downside. And we closed on Thursday right at near the 200-day moving average. So the battle was going on. And then Friday, uh, this looks uh, tame where we come back and reach has the old trend line right through here. But the, as we know from uh, the unemployment report, there was uh, up and down price action uh, that uh, led to this uh, bar right here. But we're closing just above the 200-day moving average. And guess what? Uh, as we head into the new trading week, that 200-day moving average will be a barometer for us as traders. If the price can stay above it, it's more bullish. But with the 100-day moving average caveat as the next target to get to and through on the top side, that also includes a 50% retracement. If it gets above both those levels and things are turning more to the upside with the dollar moving lower, the euro versus, versus euro moving higher. Conversely, if we start to break back below the 200-day moving average and move back down toward this uh, trend line right here and break below that, then we uh, look up for the broken 38.2, and guess what? Back to the old levels right here. So the story sort of remains the same, doesn't it? Uh, we still have the, those uh, levels uh, that we had last week in charge this week, going into this week. But, you know, that's trading. That's where you have to deal with. Uh, going to the hourly chart, um, I want to focus on what happened in uh, trading on Friday. Uh, Friday, the employment report came in much uh, stronger than expected. That sets the dollar higher the euro versus us dollar lower and then people thought eh, hey, well maybe strong is not bad maybe immigration is keeping wages down so um so on and so forth and that uh you know all, all things are still go uh so we uh, saw the stock market rebound we saw the dollar get a, a, a weaker again uh and that uh, retraced the um the mostly the almost the entire move of the day uh we uh, did end up uh, going trading above below the 200 day moving average here as you can see uh, but uh, in, in the afternoon session we did do a pretty good job of holding that 200 day moving average increasing levels importance going into the new trading week we'll see how it all pans out but that uh, 200 day moving average is going to be key uh by the way on the downside the price i did move below this uh swing area on the hourly chart you can't readily see it on the daily chart as well but it looks uh, nice and clear how this was a nice little floor right through here 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 got a little messy here but then reestablished it as a resistance level and although the price moved below that yellow area right through here and below the 100 hour moving average this was after the report so things were moving along pretty quickly uh, before it rotated back to the upside and, and uh, uh, zipped uh, to the up zipped uh, higher getting above that 200 day moving average so down here this area uh, between the 1.0, around the 108 level, let's call it 108 level, get below 108 and uh, opens the door for further downside. We'll see how it uh, progresses from there. The uh, next currency pair I wanted to uh, take a look at is the dollar versus yen. Uh, and this I'm going to focus on more, mostly on the hourly chart. 
uh, but I'll uh, reference the daily chart uh, as well. Uh, but if you uh, take a look at this uh, chart, uh, I want to bring out uh, what happened this week was key at support. And you see this low right here, which came right in this yellow area. Now, this yellow area was defined uh, going back in time to these different highs back here where we had a number of different swing highs, swing high, uh, swing high, uh, highs, 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 highs. Make that an arrow. Uh, uh, you can see uh, the, the ceiling that was developed between the 150.71 and 150.88 level. And uh, that level uh, ended up holding support in trading this week on Thursday or on Friday, as a matter of fact, during the Asian session, that's when the price came down to that level and found area and found support buyers. And we started to build back to the upside. And before the Asian session was over, we were, we were almost retraced the whole move uh, to the downside, uh, which was um, indicative of, you know, the support buying right here. Okay, the sellers turn to buyers right at support. And that's what you want to see uh, to, to prove that the buyers are more in control. And then uh, we had the uh, employment data and the, and the dollar moved higher initially and the price moved above, above the 100 and 200 hour moving average. But we didn't get up toward our high prices that we saw through here between the 150, uh, 185 and 150, 196 level. Uh, the market fell short of that level. So uh, and we uh, then consolidated right near the 100 and 200 hour moving averages between 150, 148, 150, 157. So, uh, you know, as we head into the new trading week, guess what? These moving averages are going to be our barometer for uh, more bullish above, more bearish below for this uh, currency pair. If the price can stay above that level, yes, we, we could have the chance to head up back toward our high prices uh, and a high price for the year at 151.967. If we can't stay above those levels, then we probably rotate back down toward retesting, let's say, these swing lows right through here, or this swing low right here, or this swing low right here. Uh, that's the next level. And then we start to look at the meat and potatoes, this uh, old ceiling level going back in time to the month of uh, February, where the price had held that ceiling a number of different times. And we need, need to get below that level in order to increase the bearish bias and have any chance of moving back down toward the, let's say, the 38.2% retracement of this move to the upside. So um, that's the now, this is where the key uh, area is. This is a 100, 200 hour moving average. It's just, um, it, it is what it is. We didn't really do much last week. And we just need to use that level as our either uh, barometer to the upside or barometer to the downside. Now, I mentioned that uh, I take a look at the daily chart and it has a uh, reference to this high right here. And if we go to the daily chart and the dollar versus, dollar versus yen, just to be uh, sure, um, and if you haven't seen this, uh, but the 2022 high came in at the 151.94. The 2023 high came in at 151.91. The 2024 high has so far come in at 151.96. So that's three years with three highs within uh, five pips of each other. That's a uh, pretty unusual situation, but certainly a strong ceiling that needs to be broken if the price is going to go higher. Now, the, the, there's also the Bank of Japan. People are worried that if, it get, if the uh, dollar-yen gets up to around the 152 level, they come in and intervene. So uh, traders are keeping a very cautious uh, at, against that 152 level. Uh, so, uh, you know, just be aware, be prepared. But uh, certainly there is that big ceiling up ahead. But at the same, at the same time, the sellers aren't exactly taking control. So that's my look at the dollar versus yen. The next currency I'm going to take a look at is the sterling versus U.S. dollar. So let's get started. All right, when I look at the uh, sterling versus U.S. dollar, um, you know, one of these days I'm going to get rid of this uh, this talking point, but uh, we know about this uh, re this red box here, which uh, confined a lot of the trading trading range. Yes, it went below it uh, right here, went below it right here, went below it through here, uh, and it went above that uh, trading range right here and here and a little bit over here, but most of the price action has been in this value area, I like to call it, between 125.94 and 128 on the top side. So uh, what do we do this week? Well, this is a four hour chart, so this dashed line represents the uh, start of the week, this dashed line represents the end of the week, and we did trade uh, below that area uh, in the, the start of the week, first half of the trading week, uh, and it looked like things were gonna head to the downside, and they did, uh, we went down uh, to retest this low right through here, uh, but what did we do? We found support buyers against that level, and we started to build back higher. And we, tr as you can see, we tried to stay below outside of that red box, but then we had the ISM data come out, and then that kicks kicked the price back into this red box and back up toward this cluster of moving averages. This cluster of moving averages defined by 
uh, not only the 100 day moving average, but the 100 bar moving average in the four hour chart, the 200 bar moving average on the four hour chart, all those were in this area right through here. And the price moved up to the highest of those moving averages, the 200 bar moving average on the four hour chart, and found fi finally found resistance sellers against that level and ro rotated price uh, back to the downside. On Friday, we saw uh, the uh, sterling versus US dollar uh, move to the downside, the dollar higher after the employment report that put took the price outside of our red box again uh, but uh, you can see that was uh, short-lived and we saw the uh, price rebound back to the upside here so uh, what do we have uh, going into the new trading week well we're well, well we're one in within the red box right and that's uh that's uh, always going to be a, a concern for us we need to get outside of the red box in order to increase the bearish bias and stay outside that red box also in play, by the way, on the downside is a 200-day moving average. That's below the red box rocks right here. So not only getting below it, but get, get the red box, but getting below the 200-day moving average is, is, is needed. Uh, by the way, the low price that we saw on Friday also tested the low price from a couple weeks ago. So um, you know, add that to the list of other levels. Maybe might even extend the red box down to that level because we have all these levels right through here too where the price held that support. So um, <clears throat> be aware of those levels on the downside. Uh, if uh, if we head in that direction now on the top side the key barometer for uh, traders to get to and through would be this uh, these um, cluster of moving averages here including the 100 day moving average 200 bar moving average 100 bar moving average on the four hour chart and if we get above those levels then it tilts the bias more to the upside and we start to see uh, further upside momentum uh, with the uh, 50 percent of the um, you know four week uh, trading range here uh, from this high to this lower right here is next uh, target on the top side and then uh, maybe look up yeah it's not much of a big big level but we start to look probably uh, you know so start to think if we get above the 50 percent retracement they start to move toward the high high end of this uh of the red box which uh, takes it up to about the 128 level so um uh how would i characterize the uh bi the bias uh i would say that the sellers are more in control below the uh cluster of moving averages here uh but but and the big but is that uh we're still within this value area where the price trades up and down so uh, we can't really uh say that uh we're uh trending or uh, that uh, that the sellers are firmly in control, and in fact, the uh, buyers came in and pushed the price higher on Friday. So, um, you know, we, we just have to be cautious about that. But we know resistance up here, support down here, uh, get above each or below, get above the uh, higher uh, resistance, get below the support, and we'll see what happens uh, after that. That should tilt the bias more in the direction of the break. So that's my look at the uh, sterling versus U.S. dollar. Let's take a look at the dollar versus Swiss. All right, the dollar versus Swiss, we're going to start off by taking a look at the daily chart uh, on this uh, currency pair to start off. And we, if we uh, look at the uh, last few weeks of uh, trading, we got we were able, fi able to finally get above the 38.2% retracement of this um, move to the downside. That was helped by the, uh, remember, the Swiss National Bank cut their, cut their rates uh, and uh, unexpectedly, and that uh, sent the dollar higher against the Swiss, the Swiss lower, and we got above the 38.2% retracement. Uh, but uh, and we, we also moved above this uh, swing area. The swing area is defined by a number of different uh, swing lows and swing highs through here. Uh, we got a little messy through here, but still established some um, levels of either support or resistance against that area. And then did the same through here, where again, it got, got a little choppy with trading above and below that level, but uh, things like the 100-hour moving average came in play, or 100-day moving average, I should say, came in play uh, at, at different times there, uh, ultimately leading to the downside. And then we had started to see the rotation back to the upside. So this swing area has some relevance, and we came up to it uh, when we started to move up toward that uh, area after the SMB found uh, willing sellers against that level and then moved above it. And since that time, the price has been able to stay above that swing area. That comes down to 89.86 to 91.7 uh, uh, is that area. Also in play is the 38.2% retracement at 90.25. So down, down to 89.86, if the price were to go back below that level, that would uh, give uh, upset probably some of the buyers in the dollar versus a Swiss rank from a technical perspective. So keep that level in mind going into the new trading week, 0 0.8986. Let's take a look at the hourly chart next. And if we look at the um, hourly hourly chart, I'm going to put a horizontal line at 0 0.8986 just to remind us of that level. Uh, no, it goes up somewhere around there. Uh, so there's 0 0.8986. And as you can see, the low price up for trading this week uh, fell short of, or came, came in short of that level. Uh, the low price actually came came in around the uh, 0 0.8997 level, and that uh, took the price just below this swing area through here, which I had earmarked as a number with uh, 
uh, a number of different uh, swing lows and swing highs coming in against that level, mostly uh, this floor right here before moving to the upside. So it was a level of importance. And we came down and tested it in the Asian session on Friday before moving to the upside off of the employment data and then uh, rotated all the way to the back backside and retraced the entire move uh, lower. But where do we find uh, support buyers? Right near the low of that uh, swing area and rotated back to the upside. So guess what? As we head into the new trading week, this area right through here between 0 0.8998 and 0 0.9005, uh, up above and below the 90 level is going to be a key a barometer for uh, sell sellers. If the price is going to go lower, we need to get below that level. And then we'll start to look toward the uh, uh, 100 bar moving average on the four hour chart. That's the overlay right here at 0 0.8974. Actually, before that, we're going to be looking at the 86 level. That 86 level was a key level off the daily chart. Get below that level, then we'll look toward the uh, 100 bar moving average. Get below that, and then we'll start to look toward the 38.2, uh, the bigger move to the upside here, which uh, comes in <laughs> at the 0 0.8955 level. Conversely, um, you know, with the bias uh, still a little bit more to the upside off of the support floor here and above the 0 0.8986 level the next targets on the top side come against the 100 and 200 hour moving averages those levels come in at 9041 and 9050 if the price were to get above those levels then it should open the door for further upside now i know uh, we were above it above it in trading la last week uh here we moved above it on employment day and we were above you know above it through here uh, but uh, the um uh, we also use that level as a level of, of resistance. Once we fell below, we could use that level as resistance to move lower. We moved above up to that level, move lower. Uh, so it's it's going to be a key barometer. This 100 bar moving average getting stay above it. It's more bullish for the dollar versus Swiss. Next uh, currency pair, I'm going to take a look at the, is the dollar versus Canada. All right, uh, we'll take a look at the uh, dollar versus Canada next. And if we uh, look at this uh, from the perspective of uh, the four-hour chart, uh, the uh, Canadian employment data came in uh, weaker than expected on Friday, and that uh, pushed the dollar Canada to the upside, sharply to the upside. And in the process, we moved above this uh, swing area, which uh, has been in play here as a ceiling going all the way back to this uh, period right through here, and that's November and December of 2020. Uh, three and then we reestablish that level as a resistance or a ceiling level through here so it's pretty solid this uh, ceiling we moved above that level we should have opened the door for further upside momentum and what happens the price rotates back to the downside with the dollar selling that we saw in other currency pairs and the reversal of the the uh, uh, things like the euro versus us dollar and the sterling versus us dollar so the dollar can it couldn't couldn't stop itself uh, and we uh, started to rotate back to the downside and uh, perhaps the uh, technical is uh, failing on them but break above this uh, swing area also contributed that swing area by the way comes between 136.049 and 136.26 uh, and as we go into the new trading week, guess what? We need to get above that area in order to increase the bullish bias. If we are able to do that, then we start to look toward this swing area up here at 136.54 to 68 and get above that level. And we, and, uh, we have this uh, top side trend line here, which uh, has uh, three different uh, swing highs uh, connecting it. One, uh, two, uh, three, uh, and close to three. We kind of fell short of that. But this uh, swing swing level up here near the high of that other swing air, swing uh, level right through, or this uh, trend line up near the high of the swing area is going to be the next target on the top side. Uh, if to get to and through, if we get through that level, opens the door for further upside momentum. On the downside, uh, the uh, you know if the selling continues, we can't. Uh, we can't get below the uh, 100 bar moving average and the 200 bar moving average and the 50% retracement. If we start to uh, break below those levels, then things turn uh, more uh, decidedly to, in the bear's favor and we look toward the 100 and 200 day moving averages down here. But you kind of expect, or I would, that we might see a, a support buyers against that uh, down here off of the and, and make another run at the highs. But uh, we'll see. That's uh, but uh, that's uh, my look at the dollar versus Canada next currency pair. I'm going to take a look at is the Aussie versus U.S. dollar. Uh, take a look at the Aussie versus U.S. dollar. If I guess, if, I guess if I can have a value area for the uh, sterling versus U.S. dollar, I can probably have a value area for the Aussie versus U.S. dollar as well. And this currency pair has been got going uh, sideways for uh, an extended period of time. We did have a breaks below this value area through here uh, and here, uh, but and then on the top side we had a break above above the higher of that value area through here 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 and here uh, but uh, in trading last week what did we do we came up to the high of that value area and we found willing sellers against the high uh, high of that area uh, if I can get it on the arrow right here and uh, that uh, that pushed the price up back to the downside now the move to the downside came down to uh, in toward the middle of the value area where guess what uh, is consolidating there 
a number of different uh, swing uh, moving average levels, including the uh, you can uh, 200 day moving average, the uh, 200 bar moving average on the four hour chart, and the 100 bar moving average on the, on the uh, four hour chart. All three of those moving averages are, are confined right here between the 0 0.6541 to 0 0.6550, and we found support against the higher of those levels. That would be the 200 bar moving average on the four hour chart, and started to rotate back to the upside. Uh, uh, on the top side, we also have the 100-day moving average coming into play at 0 0.6595, and on Friday, we, the high price uh, couldn't get above that level. So if I were to characterize the technicals of this uh, currency pair, it would uh, include things like um, uh, getting uh, below this uh, cluster of moving averages down here, uh, down to 0 0.6541. If we do, do that, uh, then it opens the door for further selling momentum, which could take the price to the low of this uh, red box here which uh, with a number of different swing lows and swing highs through through it going back to you know beginning of this year uh if we were uh so uh that this is going to be the key key area on the downside for the uh for the aussie versus just on new tra trading week on the top side we have uh things like the 100 day moving average get above and then we have the high of the value area up to uh, 0 0.6612 to 0 0.6624 if we get above that level and stay above that level we couldn't do it here 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 but if we are able to stay above the level then uh, buyers have uh, have the opportunity well, buyers will be more in control and uh, it's up to them to push the price higher get above these other other swing high levels and uh, get up to this uh, swing area up through here uh, at the 0 0.6676 to 89 level that's my look at the Aussie versus US dollar the final currency pair I'm going to take a look at is the New Zealand versus US dollar so let's get started all right looking at this uh, currency pair on the uh, four hour chart if I were to uh, characterize the uh, trading week uh, for this uh, New Zealand versus US dollar uh, this is the uh, start of the week this uh this uh, dash line this is the end of the week this dash line right through here and the initial move was to the downside and that uh, move to the downside took the price away from this uh, swing area this yellow area right through here which has a number of different swing lows and swing highs going back in time including these levels right through here 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 and really it started way back here uh, before uh, where where we started to use that level I see there's support or resistance level yes it traded above it and below it but there's uh, some commonality uh, in this area right through here uh, here uh, between the 0 0.5985 and 0 0.6001 uh, the market finally based against that level and rotated to the upside and it wasn't until a few weeks ago that the price came back down to that area and started to retest that level right through here here and here and we use that level as resistance here and moved to the downside on monday's trade that moved to the downside came and tested this old low right here if you, if you just go from right to left and uh, look at the next low low uh target uh that would be this one right here and that's where the price bottomed right here it also was against the low of a trend line right through here and we started to rotate back to the upside we moved back above our uh the old uh, swing area right through here back above the 61.8 and got above the 100 bar moving average in the four hour chart as well but then could not sustain momentum getting up toward these moving averages this cluster of moving average 50 percent retracement couldn't do that at all fell well short of that and started to use the 100 bar moving averages resistance and uh, Friday's trade was uh, to the downside and then back to the upside. So uh, as we head into the new trading week, uh, what, do we, what do we have to uh, look forward to or what levels are key? Well, obviously, the uh, the swing area right through here at 0 0.5985, the low of the swing area, needs to be broken and stay broken to increase the bearish bias, in which case we we'll start to look toward our low prices through here. That's going to be uh, the uh, the next closest uh, support level to get to and through. And then if we break below that level, we start to look down toward our low prices through here for the New Zealand versus US dollar. Conversely, if we are able to get back above the 100 bar moving average, then, uh, you know, like so many currency pairs in this up and down uh, trading environment that we've been in, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, different moving averages uh, up here, including the uh, 200 bar moving average of the four hour chart, the 200 day moving average, and also the 50% retracement of this uh, longer term or this move to the upside from this low right here, the October uh, low to the high price that we saw. Uh, in December, uh, and that level, uh, uh, all of those levels come between around the 0 0.6069 to 0 0.6083. Get above that level, it opens the door uh, to where the 100 day moving average and 38.2% retracement come and play on the top side. So, um, uh, so, sellers are more in control on the New Zealand versus US dollar. Uh, it's disappointing that we couldn't stay below the swing area. So there's work to do on the downside. So there you have it. A look at the, all the major currency pairs from a technical perspective uh, to start your new trading week. I hope you found it useful and helpful in uh, trade and uh, planning your trade. My name is Greg Michalowski. Good fortune with your trading. Bye-bye now.